Come on. Grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles. Yes, 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 yes. We got to move. Come on. We got to move. Luke, the 18th chapter. Beginning at the first verse. Luke, the 18th chapter. When you have it, shout Jesus. Come on. I'm going to wait for you. I'm going to give you one more second. Luke, the 18th chapter. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Matthew, Mark, Luke. The third book of the New Testament. When you have it, shout Jesus. Are y'all saying Jesus on this side? Shout it one more time. I need to make sure my hearing ain't on. This side sound like they wanted just a, oh, my side. Y'all gave me 45 seconds. Y'all gave me 30, 30 minutes. Okay, come on. Luke 18, verse 1, it says, Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them. Look at your name and say, God's trying to show you something. To show them that they should always pray and not give up. I hear you, Lord. I'm going to just read this verse. That's my only verse. I got more verses. But God says, stop right there. The Bible says, then Jesus told his disciples, do I got any disciples in the house? See, many of us are Christian, but I'm looking for disciples. Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them he's trying to communicate something to you. And he will use the earth realm to communicate what he's trying to teach you. He says, I've gathered my disciples together to show them that they should always pray. It says what? Always what? Pray. And not give up and not give up so there's a propensity for disciples to quit pull your neighbor's hand and say I need you not to quit right now I'm just going to be very brief. And my topic is don't lose your prayer vocabulary. Look at your name and say, don't lose your prayer vocabulary. Now, as you take your seat, I need you to release a praise as you take your seat. Hold that right there, Brother Carlos. Yeah! Don't you lose your vocabulary. Put it down your room. Say your vocabulary matters. Woo! Hey, it matters. What you say matters. What you say matters. What you say matters. Life and death is in the power of the what? The definition of vocabulary. We're going to be in a subject or a series called Back to the Basics. 
God instructed me to bring the people of God back to the foundational teachings that's going to help them through life. Uh, we have a lot of things going on personally. We're doing a lot of things. We're accomplishing a lot of tasks and we're meeting several different goals and sometimes in the grand scheme of that we have um, the tendency to lose focus on the foundation. I wish I would have got an amen right there. I guess everybody in here got it together. But it's one person in the house that don't, so I'm going to preach to myself. And so sometimes we lose focus on the foundational things of life. We, we lose focus on the spiritual principles, the basic principles of Christian living. Uh, somebody say vocabulary. So our first period... And back to the basics, our first class. Y'all remember how you used to have first periods? I don't know what they called them. Homeroom, first block, you know, whatever your language was. Our first class is a class on vocabulary. Come on, y'all remember you used to give vocabulary tests in class? And so the, de <laughs> the definition of vocabulary it says words used on a particular occasion. See, not only do you have to put words together, there are seasons and times where what you say is absolutely critical to your life. Critical to your life. I'm teaching better than that. So it says, so it says a group of words that are used on a particular occasion. Get this. you personally. Um, let me say it this way. Uh, maybe you'll understand it. Uh, this, there's a certain vocabulary you use from the hours of nine to five. Am I talking good? Y'all know how we are. We is just as trapped as we want to be. Driving to work. But the moment... We walk through those doors. How you, good morning. How are you today? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Y'all know how we do it. We got our corporate voice. We got our corporate vocabulary. We, we walk into these places or we walk into these territories, watch this, and based on the territory that we're in, our vocabulary changes. So it, the same is true in the spiritual realm. You got to understand that you have to carry a certain vocabulary inside of you that shifts the eternal realm. Oh, bah. You just don't come to church and keep your worldly culture vocabulary. Oh, 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 oh. You got to learn a whole new language when you enter the body of Christ. The problem with us, we try to use earthly vocabulary in heavenly places. Look at your name and say, it don't work. It don't work that way. It, don't, it does not 
contrary to popular demand. It doesn't work that way. Y'all gotta, y'all gotta be patient with me. My, my ear is plugged up. I can't hear right now. So it's throwing me up. But hear me. Luke 18, one, look at this. It says, then Jesus told his disciples a parable. Show them that they should always pray and not give up. So the question is, if you're going to give up, why are you going to pray? What you praying for? If the end result is you're going to quit and lose interest and not want to do it anymore, why are you praying in the first place? But my follow-up is to all the believers who trust God. If you pray, how dare you give up? I want to talk to the people who've been praying. If you've been praying and believing, how dare you quit God? Look down your row and say, we ain't got no quitters on this row. Woo! I'm going to say that one more time. See, the pro- when the fire gets hot, you got the tendency to quit on God. But God sent this boy from PG County, Maryland on this morning to get up in your face and say, how dare you quit on God? The word pray in this text, the Greek word, the definition, watch it. It blew me away when I read it. The definition means this. Watch this. To interact with the Lord. Not only interact with God, but watch this. You got to interact with God, watch this, by switching human desires. Watch this. For desires that he imparts by faith. That's what that, in this text, the word pray means, watch this, to interact with God by switching off my earthly desires and watch this picking up the desires God has imparted in me through faith watch this so in other words I'm about to mess up people's theology right now you need to check your role for church folk because it's about to mess some church religious folk up God put faith in me He was the first depositor of faith. I'm in the Bible because it says he gives a man. I love this. He gives them a measure. So there's something God, watch this, before, before you even hit the earth, before your mother kissed your father, God put a measure of faith inside of you. Then your parents took it a step further. They wanted a little more than a kiss. <laughs> Listen. Uh, let me bring. Somebody say divine persuasion. So watch this. God turns off your desires. I want to say so much right there. But the Lord says shut up. He says, turn off your own desires and switch on my ideas through faith. Now watch this. It, it, it is, this is essential because John the Baptist told us a heavenly principle. He says, watch this. I have to now decrease so that Christ can increase. Watch. Now I'm going to get to why, how, how can I pray and not give up? You got to start decreasing in yourself. So, so, so in other words, for this thing that God put inside of you to activate, to be triggered, you got to decrease in your earthly nature. Am I talking good? Just please say amen so I understand. Amen, class. If you don't amen me, I'm going to give you a test. Y'all know how to teach us. If you act like you don't understand, they're going to be up test. But watch this. I'm going to mess you up. 
I'm going to let you up. Go to Ecclesiastes chapter 3 for all my note takers. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. Look what it says. Because God put something in you. Look what it says. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set what? Eternity in the human heart. I'm about to mess y'all up. This don't say you got to be saved for this. So when God created you, he created you spirit. Genesis 126. He created them in spirit. He created them after his own what? Image and his what? His likeness. He created them male and what? Female. That's Genesis 126. In that moment, see, we got to get, you got to get your mind out of the earth. He created you before you were created in your mother's womb. And when he created you, spirit, he put something in your heart. And it's called eternity. Are y'all with me? See, this is why uh, uh, you have a, an undefined uh, yearning for there's something greater out there. there there's something bigger than me out there. Uh, there, there's something grander than I. There, there's, there's a higher power. Before you even accepted Christ, there was something inside of you that said there's something bigger than me out here. That's the eternity that God put inside of you. Trying to get you back to God. It's like, a, it's like one of those air tags. It, you put the tag on something. No matter where that thing go, it can always find its way back home. Or watch this. It can always, you, the owner can always find itself back to the thing. Even when the thing is seemingly lost. Oh, my God, I'm preaching right now. So, in other words, he put in eternity inside of you. And, and you, you understood there's, there's always a, a, a higher authority. There was something that's, that's larger uh, than I. And it, and it teaches us, watch this, uh, uh, that watch this, just like our natural body ha has cravings. And, and there's certain things that satisfy it. Come on, talk back to me. You, you know, I was all right. First lady, we, we eating good and making sure we take our vitamins and, and we work out. But, you know, they bought in these strawberry shortcake ice creams. Y'all know, know what I'm talking about. And something inside of me started rising up. I said, well, how many y'all got in there? <laughs> but watch this. Just like our natural cravings, what God puts inside of you needs to be satisfied. That's why a lot of people lose their way to the occult and false religions. Because they're trying to feel the yearning that's inside of them. They're trying to figure out how do I connect it. I, this needs to be connected to something. And, and just like God has put that desire, he's trying to connect himself back to you. <laughs> Are y'all with me today? Uh, I, this is a, it's an interesting fact um, because, watch this, almost every culture has traditions and customs, watch this, or ways of thinking. That can reflect back to biblical truths. Did y'all hear what I just said? Almost every culture across the globe has traditions that can be connect, closely connected to biblical truths. That's what makes the gospel sharing easy in the cultures. Because you can find something in their culture that almost 99.9% .9 of the time can tie back to a biblical truth. 
that's man's way trying to figure out how, how do I get back to it's something inside of me that's trying to get back to whatever it is. That is, is Jesus. Just so we're clear. So, so now that you establish there's something inside of me, and we're all believers, I mean, you know, let's check our roles. But God says, now that you recognize there's something inside of you, let me teach you how to activate it. Let me teach you how to grow it. Steward it. And it's found through prayer. Obasa. Somebody say pray. pray. Look at your neighbor now and say pray. pray. So he says, I want to teach you how to pray. Now let's, let's look at this for the sake of time. All right, go to Matthew 6. Verse 5. Now, in the beginning, now he's teaching, say Christ is teaching. Look at verse 5. I can't go through this whole thing, but here it is. He says, and when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. First thing, first lesson, don't be like religious folk. For they love to pray, standing in synagogues and on the corners of the streets, and they want to be seen by men. See, y'all think this want to be seen spirit just started. They were dealing with this over 2,000 years ago, folk wanting to be seen. See, y'all gotta, you got to be careful folk who just want to be seen all the time. It says they want to be seen by men. And he says, assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. Look at verse 6. Say, verse 6 is talking about me. Look at, look at verse 6. But you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut the door, pray to your father who is in the secret place. Y'all, y'all, see, 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 y'all, oh, my side. Y'all, this, this, see, y'all want to know how I pray. This is where we start. You deal with the want to be seen spirit. Get yourself in a secret place. You got to learn how to get yourself in a place where you can, you can cry ugly. See, y'all, y'all, okay, see, in here, in here, Brother Otis, they don't want to sweat the makeup off. And, you know, I don't want to mess up my outfit. And, you know, my, sh- my shoe's just a little bit too tight for me to shout like, see, in here you got limitations. But if you learn how to drag your narrow behind to the secret place. See, a lot, we don't want to go to the secret place. I, I want to pray in my bed, laying on my back, because I'm just too tired, Lord. You know my heart. No, get yourself up out your bed. You need to find a room, and it says, shut the door. Get somewhere nobody can find you. Tell the kids, leave me alone. Husband, I'll be right back. Wife. I'll be right back. Go shut the door. And he say, I'm going to pray in a secret place. So that's number one. Find you a secret place. Write that down. Write it down. We're back in class. Get a secret place. Stop praying in the car. Driving. See, uh, I'm teaching you how to find your spiritual frequency. And see, we were rehearsing, doing a mic check, and I'm using the microphone, but something jumped on this frequency. Because watch this, we're in a public place. So you got another church across here, a church on, on behind us over here, and they're all using wireless communication devices as well. And something, though you can't see it, there are frequencies moving throughout our space. And something jumped on this frequency, 
and caused interference. So when you're in a public place, there's a tendency to have interferences. Things that are stop you from your prayer flow. You got to learn how to get into a prayer flow. See, what happened on this stage was, watch this, a prayer flow. That just didn't happen to happen. That's, that's birthed out of a prayer life in secret. And the flow just hit in public. So you got to learn how to get into a, a, a prayer flow. You got to find your rhythm, your cadence, your frequency, your tone, your value. I, I'm talking real good. Where all my MITers at? All my elders at? This is where your preach is birthed. People want to know how, I, how do I preach? Pray. If you pray, your preach will come out of your pray. You got to, I'm trying to sound, no, don't try to sound like everybody else. If you get on your knees and begin to get a rhythm, a tone, a cadence, that's your preach right there. And so you got to, t- I hope y'all writing this down. Because if you ask me and when I get off this stage, I probably won't know. You got to find a preaching flow, a, a praying flow, a prayer flow. And it's a flow. So you got to, it's a dictation the rhythm off your tongue. Watch this. And then in your secret place, shut up. Listen. What is God saying? Write it down. Then take it back and see if it aligns in scripture. Because you need to vet if that's myself. Because a lot of y'all saying God said and God ain't never said. That's my emotions talking to me. And you got to realize to differentiate between the two. Uh, Is that my flesh? Is that in my will, my creativity, my emotions? Or is that the one living true God? Okay. I got to move on. This is why he says, now, after you've found your secret place, you've closed the door, right? You've gotten to a place of, of, of um, tranquility, solitude. Whenever you found Jesus, Jesus was, he stilled away. And he was praying. Where was he praying? What garden was he praying in? I like my Sunday school class. He, you can always find him praying in the garden of Gethsemane. He found him a, a, a quiet place. And so now that you found your quiet place, he says, let's go to, let's go to verse 9. Y- y'all got the Lord's Prayer? Let's bring it on up. Look at this. He says, in this manner, therefore, pray. And y'all know how we do. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. That's how we do. Look at your name and say, that's how we do. But do you know that's just the model of prayer? It's a prayer model. Look at your name and say, we're going back to the basics. It's a prayer model. And what that prayer model stands for is the acronym. Y'all can put it up on the screen. It's called ACTS. You see, I got an I right there. Go back. You see, I got an I right there. That's for intercession. I put ACTS with an I in there because it, it stands for adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication, intercession. Woo! I'm going to help y'all. Adoration. Confession. Thanksgiving. Supplication. Intercession. Woo! That's when you stand in the gap for somebody else. Yeah. Mm. 
See, you got to deal with you before you can deal and help somebody. Hey, boss. Let me say that. See, uh, we got too many intercessors who ain't dealt with their flesh laying hands on people. I'm just going to, for the sake of time, I'm going to deal with two today. I will start with adoration and confession. And I promise you, I, I'm, I'm going to be done. All right. Somebody say adoration. Look at your name and say adoration. Yeah, this is, watch this. You know, asking God for stuff doesn't get his attention. (laughs) I'm going to say that one more time. Asking God for stuff doesn't get his attention. God heal me. God bless me. God, I need a new job. Give me a new job. Can I, can I, can I? Give me, give me, give me. Heal me. Deliver me. If your child just came up to you, Daddy, give me. You'd be like, what? Do y'all understand what I'm trying to say? They don't even ask how you doing. How your day was? Do you have anything else going on? Can I have? No. Watch this. But if you're smart, if you know, because y'all know how they they gas you up. Uh Mommy, you're so nice. You're so pretty today. Father. They don't call you dad. Father. It's again, vocabulary. Father, man, you're looking so strong today. I like the way you lead our family and how you pray. You know, they, they're hanging around you. you like, why are you still here? Y'all know, I'm, te- Whoa, I'm teaching. See, 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 when there's a need, watch this. They know how to get in the presence. But, but watch this. You got to learn how to get in the presence. Because getting in the presence is getting in the presence. The question is, can you get God to respond? I, 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 I don't want to beg God to get God's ear. You, you got to realize that the alpha... And the omega, the beginning and the end, doesn't respond to begging, Felicia. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to deliver you from the Felicia spirit. Because all you do is beg God. You got, I, I ain't, I'm in the season and I'm, I need God. So my, I got to stop. Be, I got to learn how to stop begging God. It's time out for beggars. We don't need no scrubs in greater church. You got to learn when you open your mouth, I know how to get heaven to respond to my sound. I know how to get God to come into my presence and begin to say, I, I got to respond to this one right here because their sound is different than everybody else's. See? It says that father which art in heaven. What? Hallelujah. See, see, when, 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 when they, I'm, I'm just different. When I see words like that, I, that's what I imagine. Hallelujah. I see the glory and the smoke coming up. No, no, y'all gotta, I'm trying, I'm trying to help you. That's how I see it. I don't play like when I see work. No, that is that means something real heavy right there. And so and so watch this. It starts off with adoration. Don't come to God asking him for stuff. You got to learn how to build God up. See, it's not that he needed need to be built up. But y'all got to know your Bible. 
Because this Bible ain't no, it ain't no joke. Because he, he said he got cherubims. See, you competing with, with everything in glory. Y'all see, y'all, y'all playing. And God's serious. Uh -uh, you competing with everything in glory. And they flying around him 24 hours a day saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God almighty. Oh, y'all not hearing me. So when God is used to a sound like that, how dare you come to God talking about, let me have something. Give me something to take. Lord, I've been saved for 30 days. You ain't did nothing in my life. Everybody else can. No, you need to start your prayer pray off with some adoration. You got to learn how to put God in his rightful place. And see, when you adore and you honor God, it ushers in his presence. It brings him in to your problem. When you begin to put him in his rightful place, when you, when you recognize, watch this, that we're beneath God. When you finally realize you ain't so uh, fabulous in your sight. You know, I'm being serious. Some of y'all come to God with pride. I ain't messing up my hair. I'm not going to be vulnerable with God. See, see, you're not putting God over you. You got to recognize that we're beneath God, not above him. Psalms 23 says he inhabits the praises of his people. But, but see, what we do, Brother Rob, we got that verse all wrong. Because we so religious. <laughs> it says he inhabits and we get to shouting. And we, we spin around and we get to ratatata and tototo boshatata. But the proper language is he enthrones the praises of his people. So in other words, when you adore God, it builds a seat. See right here. Put it up here. What happens is it constructs a seat. And I've learned to adore God. And the more I build a seat for him through adoration, I'm going somewhere. The more I build God up, the smaller my problem becomes. The more I build God up, watch this, the smaller I become. Oh, y'all, oh, y'all. See, they ain't want to shout right there. See, the more I build God up, I'm reducing myself. And what, what am I doing? When, when I adoration, when I give God adoration, watch this, I'm building up, watch this, a vocabulary of praise. Are y'all with me this morning? Look at your neighbor and say, we got to build our vocabulary in praise. All right, so I got a little exercise. I got a little exercise. Y'all ready? We can ready to go. I, I promise y'all, we, you know, we, we, we can ready to go Sunday afternoon, Brother Carlos, Brother Tim. We gonna, let's jump. We're going to jump in there. I got a little exercise because what I want to show you, and hopefully they put it on the screen in a way that you can take it home, all right? And we, maybe we'll put it in the app, all right? I'll send y'all my notes. But what we want to do, we want to build our vocabulary of praise. And it starts with, Lord, you are. Mm. Do, can we put that up? Do we got, Lord, you are. See, you're dealing with a God that said, when you go to him, everybody said, tell him, I am, that I am, sent you. When I read that as a child, I didn't know what that meant. But through revelation, God is saying, tell him whatever I need you to be, I'm going to be. 
has sent him. So we got to start this off uh, with God, you are. And watch this. The moment you tell him that, watch this. He'll never cease from being because he's eternal. Somebody say, Lord, you are. Are y'all ready? Lord, you are wonderful. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're amazing. You are good. You are magnificent. And uh, Lord, you are glorious. You are the Prince of Peace. Uh, you are the great I am. And Lord, you are strong. Lord, you are my defender. You're my champion. God, God, you are, you are, you are like no other. God, you are my counselor. Oh, my shame. Lord, you are my closest friend. Yeah. Lord, you are my Abba Father. When my father left me, God, you are my father. When my mother left me, God, you are my mother. God, you, know, you are my center of joy. Lord, you are my deliverer. I don't know. See, see, I'm trying to find wherever God's been something to you, I need you to respond. And the more that you respond, yeah, my son, the more that you respond, hey, God will come in. Lord, you're my deliverer, God. You're my healer, Lord. You are my foundation. Lord, you are the air that I breathe. And God, uh, you are my peace, Jehovah, shalom. God, you are my joy, Lord. You are the smile on my face, God. The only reason that I can smile through this type of pain, God, is the very fact that you are my God. And I believe you that you can heal me. See, you got to learn how to build God up. Lord, you're all that I have. And God, you're the smile on my face. God, you're the beat in my heart. Lord, you're all that I want. Lord, you're all that I have. Lord, you are all that I need. I don't need nobody else. I don't need anybody to tell me how wonderful I am. I have God. I have God. Look at your neighbor and say, I got God. You got to learn how to build him up. You got to say, Lord, you're Jehovah Jireh. You're Emmanuel. You're Jehovah Rapha. There was a season that I needed healing in my body. God, you heal. See, y'all still ain't responding. I'm looking for responders right now. This is a 911. I need some responders in the house. How dare you call 911 and nobody respond? The nerve of my taxpayer dollars going in the toilet. When I call you, you better learn how to. I'm trying to get God to respond. Hey. Lord, you're my hero, and uh, Lord, you're my protector. Lord, you are my hiding. Y'all ain't praying. I'm, uh, I'm just saying, we ain't done yet. Lord, you're my hiding place. Oh, Lord, you're my hero, and you're my Superman. I don't need Marvel. I don't need, I don't need Black Panther right now. I don't need Captain America or Iron Man. I need the God Man. I need the man who hung on a tree. I, I need my savior. I need the blood of Jesus right now because he's my counselor. Lord, you're my refuge. You're, Lord God, my alert system. God, you're my alarm system in this crazy age. You're my discernment. God, you're a sovereign in all your ways. God, you're my, of course, y'all getting tired. Y'all getting tired. We ain't through adoration yet. How dare you get tired? I'm trying to teach you how to travail in the spirit. You can't get tired. If I had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough to give God the point. You'll never have enough words. You'll never have enough vocabulary to fill the throne room of God. He's just that big. Somebody shout, Lord, you are. Now you fill in the blank. Come on, I don't hear your language. I'm going to be done right here. I'm just going to be done. Come on, say, Lord, you are. You're the Messiah. 
Lord, you are sovereign in all your ways. Lord, you're the God who reigns. Lord, you're powerful. Lord, you're my help in the time of trouble. God, you're a bomb in Gilead. Lord, you are the lily in the valley. You're the bright and morning star. Lord, you're the lifter of my head. Come on, see, you got the larger. This is what I do in private. It's just coming out in public. Huh? I need you to open up your mouth and fill it in. Come on, begin to go and get with you a neighbor and say, Lord, you are. And just keep going, keep going. Go, go, go. Come on, you got 30 seconds. I don't see you working with a neighbor. Get with somebody that'll talk back to you. Y'all get to praising God together. Say, Lord, you are. Come on, come on, come on. Lord, you are. Lord, you are.